Good evening, everybody. I remember my first day in DCU uh, back in 1984, uh, like it was only yesterday. And one of the reasons I remember it is because it was also the first day I ever laid my eyes on a computer. It was one of those Olivetti's with black screens and twinkling green font and the floppy disk. And the engineering students back there used to say, back in those days, used to say, you always knew when the media guys were in the computer lab because there'd be Tipex on the screens. <laughs> I told that to my kids last night, that story, and they looked back at me blankly. <laughs> the point is that we're living in an age of unprecedented technological change. Mobile broadband, which we're all using, is the fastest growing technology in human history. We can hardly imagine our lives today without access to the internet, with all of the applications that we're using, be it on finance or transport or entertainment. Yet, for 57% of the world's population, that's not an issue. 57% of the world's population are not online. So for 3.9 billion people, they have no opportunity to participate in the digital economy, to network with their friends and peers, or to tell their own stories. And this global digital divide can also be seen at the national level, even amongst different sectors. If you think, for instance, of all the hype around the tech sector itself, you just have to see what's going on in Lisbon at the moment. There is a real focus on and an, an obsession almost with the, the startups. You open up the, the media, you go online, they're talking about technology gurus and the importance of technology startups, etc. Now, it's not to say that this is not important, and investment in technology innovation is, of course, important, but not at the expense of the non-tech sectors. We need to get to a place beyond the hype, beyond the dot-com hype, where non-tech sectors can visualize and imagine how technology can be transformative for their worlds and their businesses, that they can be active participants in the digital economy and the digital world. I met my wife here at DCU, and she's from Skibbereen in West Cork. And that's where we got married, and our first child took his first steps there. And there's very interesting things outside of Olympic rowing that are going on in Skibbereen these days. There's an initiative linked to reimagining Skibbereen as a digital town. At the center of this is something called the Ludgate Hub, which is providing high-speed broadband connectivity digital skills and stewardship, innovative working spaces, showing people how they can work in more collaborative ways for the digital economy. And they're really pulling together as a community to try and reinvent, reimagine themselves for the digital future. There's one initiative set up by a woman called Triana McCarthy. Now, I don't know Triana, I've never met her, but I've been following her story. And she set up something which I thought was really interesting. It's called eStreets.ie. Now, if you imagine yourself walking down the main shopping street of Skibbereen, or indeed any shopping street in any rural town in Ireland, and then imagine that online. So what Triana has done is she's brought together all the retailers and service providers and producers in Skibbereen <coughs> into a unified collaborative platform called eStreet.ie. So opening up Skibbereen to the world, planting the seed in regular traders and retailers on the street, that they too can be part of this digital economy, that they too can imagine themselves as digital entrepreneurs and see a sustainable future for them and their families. And importantly, they're collaborating and not competing. My wife left Skibbereen and moved to the northwest coast, working with the IT in Sligo, where she's working in online learning. And her colleague there, is an amazing man called Brian Mulligan, who's been very passionate about online learning since way back in the day when nobody else was talking about it. And Brian is head of the online education program in Sligo IT. And he started off in 2002 with five students, some off-the-shelf software, and most importantly, a passionate belief that technology can make a difference for people who want access to education who maybe the barriers of entry are too much, or the thoughts of a formal qualification is too daunting, but that 
they, they would like a bespoke education at, and apply the technology to their lifestyles. Today, there's more than 2,000 students in that program, and they have ambitions for much more. I was sitting around our kitchen table in Sligo last night talking to Brian. He might be one of our great national resources in e-education. And I asked him, you know, how do we make it work? How do we make technology go beyond the tools and the tricks where it can actually make a difference in people's lives, such as in the educational space? And he said, basically, you need numeracy and literacy, and you need basic digital skills. This is no surprise. But then we need to move into a space changing our mindsets a little bit in terms of what education actually means. So for him, it's about people knowing, first of all, what's out there, the art of the possible, and, and wanting to go and get that. So encouraging a sort of self-directed learning. Now today, the way the formal educational system is structured, it, we're not really quite ready for this, but Brian is convinced that with time, most likely driven by employers, that self-directed learning, people learning what they want and getting credited for it will become the norm rather than the more formalized, structured educational systems we have today. So putting a dig digital layer on an analog foundation. Down the road from Sligo IT, there's a guy called Charlie Kelly. Any of you who like oysters, like I do, he's one of the finest oyster producers in the country. Now Charlie and his fellow producers on the northwest coast, these guys will drown and disappear without internet connectivity. They're up at 4 a.m. in the morning tracking the commodity markets in Taiwan. They're online organizing highly complicated logistics operations to get their very fragile product fresh onto the tables of Asian restaurants that evening. They're tracking algae bloom, which could completely destroy their business. And Charlie says, most importantly, they're tracking the French because they're the biggest competition. Now, in the maritime and farming communities of Ireland, I believe we have some of the most experienced innovators out there. These are the people who know what it's like to take risks. They know what it's like to be resilient and survive in difficult economic conditions. And they certainly know and appreciate the importance of technology. But are they getting what they need? 140,000 farmers in this country today don't have access to high-speed broadband. Now, I spoke with the Chief Technology Officer in the Irish Farmers Association, Ethan Cleary, and for seven years he's been working on this, trying to put root into an agri-tech policy in this country. And yet, at the moment, things are moving forward, but much, much too slow. These farmers are working in a hyper-competitive world, and they really need not just the infrastructure, which is yet to come at the quality and affordability that they need, but they also need the skills, and they need the sort of stewardship that Triana McCarthy is providing in Skibbereen. And also, Ethan says, in his seven years, he's never seen different ministries working together. Now, I work on an international uh, arena, and this intersectoral, interdepartmental, interministerial collaboration is becoming very much the norm. So we need to see agriculture, communications, education, enterprise working together, creating a strategic surge that provides and pro propels the agricultural sec sector forward so they can compete, so they can achieve their ambition to be digitally existing in a digital economy and digitally thriving in a digital economy. So why is all this important? Well, if we're not going to leave anybody behind, if we're to have digital dividends rather than a digital divide, then we need a combination of affordable, quality access to infrastructure. This is like oxygen in the current digital economy, such as the infrastructure desperately needed by the Irish agricultural sector. But we also need stewards like Brian Mulligan and Ethan Cleary and Triana McCarthy who can help communities be they actual towns or sectors like the farming community, visualize and understand how technology can be a real ally and a real resource and see what they can do with technology and not just how they can use it. Another important ingredient or common narrative that goes through these stories is the 
the idea of collaboration. Technology, all the studies are showing globally that technology is changing business completely. Accenture just brought out a report a couple of weeks ago from competition to collaboration. Technology encourages collaboration. It, it creates collaboration. We're in, everybody's working in a global market, so going it alone is simply not an option very often anymore. So the whole, the whole area of collaboration, if we zoom out to large corporate companies like Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, IBM, you might be interested to know that these guys, they're no longer working as competitors as we understand it. They're collaborating. They just set up, for instance, those five companies that I just named, they just set up a collaborative consortium around artificial intelligence and data mining because they understand that this is so huge and it'll be so vastly important in the future that they cannot go it alone, that they need common standards, common language, and a common understanding of how to tap into the massive reservoirs of data that will come from the Internet of Things and artificial intelligence. And the, the whole area of data, they will say, along with other companies like Huawei and Alibaba, is probably the single most important issue in the future of the technology revolution, how it will be managed, how our privacy will be transparent and accountable, how we will really reap value and good from the data. And here I think there's a huge opportunity for Ireland. By virtue of the fact that we have so many important multinational companies based in this country, our privacy commissioner and his team are dealing with new and unprecedented challenges on the whole area of data and privacy governance. So, more by accident than by design, you might say, we are developing a body of knowledge on data governance that is unlike any other country. Our privacy commissioner and his team are making rulings on landmark cases that will influence international policy. Now, I would personally love to see Ireland play a much greater role, a more assertive role on the international stage to shape data governance for the future. So in reimagining Ireland for the next 100 years, and particularly an inclusive Ireland, and when we speak of an inclusive Ireland for the next 100 years, we'll be speaking about a digitally inclusive Ireland. So there are three changes, three developments I really want to see. I want to see the, the type of collaboration that's going on in Skibbereen, led by people like Trina McCarthy, become the norm. I think it's important what's happening in Skibbereen. I want it to work. I want us to learn from it. I want it to be applied to many other different towns across Ireland. And these types of technology champions and stewards, this role needs to be formalized, recognized, cultivated to bridge between the non-tech sectors and the potential and power of technology. I also think we need to move beyond the hype and look at how technology can be applied to the non-tech sectors. Help these sectors understand that technology is not something alienating or daunting, but rather an ally and a resource that will help you have a more sustainable community and business into the future. And thirdly, I want to see Ireland become a real voice in data governance on the international policy scene. Believe it, data governance will become possibly the most important issue which will decide whether technology is something that benefits society or divides society. Thank you very much.